Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in the Super Ultimate Guide to Design Systems. In this video, we're gonna learn a couple of important shortcuts that I'm gonna be using throughout the course. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, I've already made a video about this in the past. It's quite a bit of an old video, but it still holds good even today. It's just that the UI of Figma was different way back when I made the video. Today, it's very different, but irrespective of that, the tips and tricks, the shortcuts are very much the same. The fundamentals hold good. So definitely make sure to watch this video. I'm also going to be covering a few more in this video as well. Uh, the link for this will be down below in the description. So make sure to check that out or you can click on this and watch it right from here. Now, the first shortcut I'm gonna talk about is how to select elements. Now, selecting elements can be such an underrated thing uh, because if people don't know how to select elements, it's just going to make you work really slow. Your workflow is going to be very slow. You can't make changes really fast. You can't edit things really fast. You can't add things really fast, right? So I'm going to show you what are the actual ways to actually select elements really fast. Now, again, like I said, this might this might not sound like a big deal, but because you're going to be designing screens every single day and you're going to be designing tons of screens and you're going to be editing tons of layers, it's really important to understand how to select elements, right? And I'm going to show you this and and uh, you can download, you can get access to this file and obviously definitely make sure to practice it yourself with this file. Um, I've put all the steps, I've put everything that you need to know and obviously you can follow me along with this video. Right, so the first one is we're gonna select 4.96, right? Now, what we see over here is basically um, an auto layout frame, all right? And if I click over here, you can see, uh, maybe I'm gonna bring this all the way to the top. All right, so basically we have um, this title card, we've got um, an icon, we've got some text over here, and then we've got a frame with a couple of auto layout, right? Definitely make sure to click and check them out. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select 4.96. Now, most of them already know how to do this. Since 4.96 is the last element in the entire layer stack, which basically means that 4.96, as you can see over here, is the last layer, you can hold down Control or Command on your keyboard and then click right? That's the fastest way to select. I've seen a lot of people who just try to click multiple times, but if you are selecting an element that is the last layer, just hold down control and click, right? Even this text is uh, the last layer. It's not in a parent frame. This is the auto layout frame, but then this is not in any container. So you can click on it outside like this, but then the rest of them are in sort of a parent container. So just make sure you hold down control to click on that, right? That is super straightforward. And most of you already know this. The second one is we're going to select the review wrapper. What you're going to be selecting is this wrapper. Uh, there is a wrapper uh, between, you know, that contains the star and the label, right? Now, I'm going to click outside and we're going to see how to do this. Now, there are multiple ways of doing this and it's up to you how you want to do it and whatever is comfortable for you. The first way is to double click uh, until you click on this. So basically what I'm doing is I'm clicked outside. I'm going to start again. I'm just going to go to this area and double click you know, until I get that, right? But it requires me to do three clicks. So I'm gonna do one click over here, one click again, and you have to do it really fast or else Figma is now going to capture that. So I'm gonna click three times, so one, two, three, and there you go, I clicked on it, right? Now that's one way to do it, but again, that just puts extra effort on your fingers and you know, you have to click three times. Now, the other way is to select it with a sibling. Now, because if I were to select this uh, auto layout, right? We have all of these elements over here, right? All of these belong in the same hierarchy. So they're basically called siblings. Now, one of the way to select a sibling is to select another sibling, right? So because this dot is one of the siblings, I can hold control and click on it to select this sibling, or maybe I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. And then I can hover over on the other one to select this one, right? So now I selected it really fast. But the problem with this is that it requires you to go ahead and, you know, select another element, which is an additional extra tap. Right. So maybe this works. Maybe it is really fast for you. I can do the same thing over here. I can click on this and then come over here and click on this. I can click on this and come over here and click on this. Right. That's a faster way to do it. Now, the other way is to go in the reverse order where I'm basically going to select 4.96 by holding down command. And then I'm going to press shift and enter on my keyboard, which is going to move me one level up. Now, basically, when I click on 4.96, you can see I've selected this, but I press shift enter. It moves me one layer up. Right. So this is some mental mapping that I have done in my head. And this obviously comes with practice. Right. And it's up to you what you want to do. You can either click on the sibling and choose another element or you can go to the lowest level and then press shift enter to come back up. Right. So there are multiple ways to select it. Right. And this might not seem like a big deal, but as and when you design so many screens every day, you're just going to realize that your workflow is going to be really hard. And when I'm making a design system, you're going to see me use this technique all the time. So I'm going to select elements really fast. And that is very important for you because you need to be really good at designing screens and you need to be very fast as well. 
Now the next one is to select the logo and the super host wrapper, right? Now here it's different. Now we here we have a logo uh, which is basically at a parent level. And then we're going to select the super host wrapper itself, right? Now this is at a child level. So we're selecting a parent and we're selecting a child. So how do we do that, right? So I'm going to start off by clicking on this. Now this is easy to click on because this is just on the topmost layer. So I can just click. I don't have to hold down control. I can click on it. But if I have to select this one, right? Obviously you want to hold down shift if you want to select multiple elements. So I'm going to hold down shift. Now here, as you can see, if I just hover over, I'm holding down shift right now. And if here, as you can see, if I hover over, it does a normal, you know, selection. It doesn't allow me to select anything. If I hold down command on my keyboard, right? I can then go into the deepest level. But the problem is I don't want to select, you know, super host. I want to select super host and the icon and that entire wrapper. I want to select that entire container, right? So how do we do that? Because if I hold down command and click on this, you can see it just selects these two elements and I don't really want that. And if I press shift enter, then it just selects the entire card and you know that shift enter doesn't work, right? So what do you want to do is you want to click on this, okay? And then hold down shift, okay? And once you hold down shift, you want to use a double tap technique, right? So you want to double click. And this time you will have to do it three times. You have to select it three times. You will have to click on it three times in order to select it, right? I'm going to, I'm going to do that again with this. So I'm going to select this title and then the super host container. I'm going to click on this, hold down shift and then double tap this three times to select it, right? I can hold down shift and now select the parent element as well. Now, what if I want to select this, the super host wrapper and just 4.96, right? What if I want to do that? So let's do that. So I'm going to click on this, hold down shift, double tap really quickly to select this. And then now here, because I want to select only 4.96, I can hold down command and that's going to take me one level deeper. The moment you hold command, you're going to go one level deeper and you can click on this, right? And if I just probably drop the opacity, you can see I've selected all the three layers, right? So this is really important for you to actually go ahead and learn how to select elements really quickly. If there are multiple parent layers, multiple siblings, multiple hierarchy, you should be able to quickly select elements and really practice this because this is pretty much the most basic action that you're going to be doing every single day, thousands of times, right? Uh, maybe I'm going to add another one over here. So I'm going to say select the logo. Uh, maybe I'm going to copy this, select the logo. Um, I'm going to say super host wrapper um, and uh, 4.96, right? So this is the fourth thing that you want to do. Okay. Moving on, selecting all the icons. Now, as you can see here, I have a simple auto layout. Okay. Uh, let me move this to the top. So here I have a simple auto layout. I have few list items and each list item has an icon and some text, right? Now, if I want to select all the text elements, I can hold down command and I can select, hold down shift and select everything else. Now selecting text is really easy over here because this is at a parent level, because this is the last level. But what if I want to select the icon, right? If I hold down control, I can only select the circle, right? But I really want to select this entire icon container itself. This is what I want to select. I don't really want to select the shape. So how do we do this? So again, what you want to do is first you want to select the first icon. Okay. So here I'm going to use two techniques. Either I can double click really quickly to select, or I can hold down command click, select the sibling, and then click on the other one to select its sibling. Now I want to select the icon of all the others as well. Now, all of these are different parent layers itself, right? Now, as you can see, if I just hover, even if I hold down shift and if I hover, I can't really select the, you know, icon. So in this case, again, we want to use a double tap method. I'm going to start off again. I'm going to double tap over here. I'm going to hold down shift because I want to select multiple elements. Now I'm going to quickly go ahead and start double tapping everything. So I'm going to double tap over here, double tap over here, double tap over here, double tap over here, right? This is a really fast way to do it. Now, the reason I didn't use control is because if I use control, I'll, I'll end up clicking on this shape layer, which is not what I want, right? That will work on the label because we can do it the label because the label is the last layer itself, right? So for that, we can hold down control. But for this, we can't hold down control or command because, you know, we want to select the placeholder, which is a layer above, right? Now, another way is you can actually click on all of these shape layers, which is probably a weird way to do. And then hold on shift and enter and you're going to go one layer above, right? Now, this is again a way you can do it. But for some reason, clicking on the shape layer for icons sort of is a weird way for me. If it works for you, you're all good. But if it doesn't, then don't follow that, right? So do what works for you and make sure you're really quick at it, right? Because in the end, the objective is to select elements and layers really fast. All right, moving on. Um, this is something that is super straightforward. 
uh, but I really thought I wanted to mention it. A lot of times you're going to be using space between. So here, what you want to do is here you have the auto layout. Right now it is set to left align and it's basically set to hug. But if you click on this, it's going to create this outline. If you press X on your keyboard, it's basically going to set that to space between. We're going to do this so many times when building design systems because a lot of design systems will require this. So it's important to do that. So this is really a quick shortcut. So just select the element, press X to, you know, uh, set it back to normal and press X to space between. Okay. Now, here's a very important one, which I've seen a lot of designers make mistakes in. Sometimes when you're designing, you tend to go ahead and select text layers and change the bounding box by mistake. Right here, you can see we have this extra line height. Here you can see we have this extra space, right? Now, really good designers who are really good at Figma, they don't make these mistakes, but beginners tend to make this mistake all the time. And the problem with this is that this messes up your line height and your distance and spacing between elements, right? Because if there is another element over here and ideally you want it to be four pixel, the total gap is actually going to be more than four pixels because you have this extra unnecessary gap that you created by mistake, which is not a part of this, right? Because the, if I come here and change or increase or decrease this, the line height here is not changing. It's just the bounding box that is getting changed. And for example, if I create, uh, if I duplicate this and I create another one, I set that to auto layout. And if I set, let's say the, you know, the gap of here to four, the gap is not really four. The gap is a lot more over here. And that's because you added this extra, you know, gap over here, which is completely wrong. And this time this happens usually when you're not selecting layers correctly, right? So how do you go ahead and reset that bounding box, right? So there are a couple of ways to do this. The first one is to click on um, this layer, which says auto height. Right. But again, coming over here and looking at this and selecting it creates a problem. As you can see, if I click on auto height, it's it, you know, sort of fixes that. Another way is to actually just come over here and double tap on the bottom, uh, you know, um, edge. And that's going to go ahead and fit it. If you do it for the right side, it's going to set the entire thing over here. And obviously it's going to put everything into one line because we are setting it to hug contents because the bounding box is wrapping the text. Right. I'm going to control Z that. Right. And I'm going to control Z that again. Now, whatever you want to reset everything, you can just come here to the corner and double click and that will reset everything else, right? So if you just want to remove the bottom gap, double click over here and this will definitely fix it. So that way you don't really have to come here and measure and see what is the right one. Just double tap and that's going to take the line height that you have set and it's going to fit it appropriately, right? So this is again a very important tip because if you if if the text layers do not have the proper bounding box, your spacing is going to go for a toss and that's not something that you want, all right? Next, um, here's an interesting one. So let's say you have a lot of these layers and you really want to quickly change the text, right? So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to enter the names of five cities. So I'm going to show you multiple ways of doing it. Obviously, I'm going to hold down command and click to select it. I'm going to double click to go ahead and actually, you know, make it active. And let's say I'm going to say Bangalore. All right. Now, when I hover on the other ones, you can see that all of them get automatically active. So all I have to do is just select. But when I select, the problem here is that I actually have to go ahead and, you know, press, you know, command A and then delete and then type again, right? What if there's an easier way to do it, right? So I'm going to sort of, again, I'm going to click over here. I'm going to double tap because I want to start entering. So I'm going to say Bangalore. And you're going to actually press the tab key on your keyboard. When you press tab, it's automatically going to select for you and you can just start typing. I'm not even going to click on anything, right? I'm just going to press on the tab key and it automatically makes the next field active. And here I'm going to say uh, Chennai. Here I'm going to say Delhi. Here I'm going to say Mumbai. And here I'm going to say Kolkata, right? So that was super fast, right? I didn't have to click on anything. I just had to press tab and then start, you know, editing the things, right? So this is again a very important, nice tip uh, and trick for you to follow. Next. Uh, coming to the last one is uh, replacing components. Now, this is a pretty interesting thing. Now, here I have actually two components that I've made. These are master components. And you can press shift I on your keyboard to get the components. Now, what if I want to replace this component with another component, right? And I don't really want to bring in other component and change the X and Y position. I just want to replace it wherever it is, right? Just replace on the spot. So what you can do is I have a list item and I want to replace that with a table item. So I'm obviously going to select the instance of that. I'm going to press shift I, which is going to bring in the components. I'm going to search for table item and I've already written that. What you want to do is you want to hold on option on your keyboard or alt on windows and make sure that this is selected. Click on the new component and that is going to go ahead and replace it. As you can see, now it replaced to a table item. I'm going to replace it back to a list item. So I'm going to press shift I and I'm going to say list 
and here I'm going to get, oh, let me try that again. I'm going to say list item. I'm going to hold down option and click and that's going to replace it like right there on the spot, right? So these are six tips that I highly recommend you to learn and master. And it's really important that you learn how to design screens faster in Figma. And if you haven't checked out this video, make sure to check this out as well. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.